So do you commute with Mox all the time? No, no, no. I'll just I'll just I'll just I'll just I'll just I'll just Thanks for coming, everybody. It's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Hiroki Yuda. I'm not sure if that pronunciation is yes. right. So, yeah. From the Graduate School of Medicine, the University of Tokyo. And you're also in Oxford at the moment, aren't you? Yes, yeah, uh, until next February. And yes. in Oxford till next uh, February. So we took the opportunity uh, while uh, Hiroki was here to <laughs> gonna give us a seminar uh, on uh, uh, systems biology of uh, uh, human sleep wake cycles. Uh, I'm looking forward to yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, and also, thank you, Dan. And also, uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to, to be here. So, uh, I'm, my name is Hiro Kibera. Please call me Hiro. Uh, and also, today, I'm going to talk about the uh, sleep. So, which makes me a little nervous because, you know, you may uh, feel sleepy in my talk. But uh, that is not due to my talk is boring, but due to the topic itself. So, so uh, why sleep? Uh, and see before. Let me check. Yeah, it works. Uh, but, but before I go into the detail of the sleep uh, research, uh, let me introduce a little bit about the human biology or human systems biology. So, so nowadays, uh, you can access to the, a lot of medical record, uh, medical phenotyping data, and also you can access to the general information. So therefore, I think it's high time to go to the human biology as a kind of basic science. Uh, but uh, there are a couple of uh, technical challenges, which include causality issues and also complexity issues, and also maybe heterogeneity issues. Uh, so some of them you might be already familiar with, but uh, uh, so I uh, just want to point it out. So then, Yeah, so, uh, so let me start with the causality issues. Uh, so uh, in human cell, so, uh, uh, which is also maybe related to the Mendelian randomization, you, you guys are uh, uh, much more familiar with uh, than me. But uh, uh, how can I say, uh, in human biology causality, how to tackle with the causality a relationship is uh, quite key. So uh, uh, for that purpose, uh, not only Mendelian randomization, but also uh, kind of animal uh, research in which you can test your hypothesis by using the evolutional conservation is quite interesting and important. So for that purpose, we recently developed a, a new method, a series of new method called next generation genetics. I will touch upon this concept. So next generation genetics is defined as a mammalian genetics without breeding or crossing. So within uh, one generation, you can make a knockout mice or knocking mice uh, to test your causality analysis. Okay. So regarding complexity issues, uh, so we now have a, a catalog of the molecules like a germ information, but we are a little bit limited in terms of the uh, information of cells. So therefore, uh, we recently developed a new method to, uh, to visualize and analyze uh, every single cell existing in the organs. So uh, I will also touch upon this. So currently, we can how to say, visualize every single cell of the newborn mice or adult mice brain. Uh, and also probably uh, you can analyze the uh, uh, tissue of humans. Okay. And then finally, uh, uh, unlike animal research, uh, we are uh, mostly doing, uh, humans have a lot of heterogeneity in environment and, as well as uh, in germs. So uh, for that purpose, we need to have a very accurate phenotyping method in real world uh, uh, setting. So therefore, for that purpose, we developed a new method called Axel to monitor uh, sleep-wake cycle in very accurate patterns. So combining these three technological uh, uh, technology, we try to tackle with the sleep uh, uh, problems. Uh, why sleep? Because uh, sleep is quite uh, 
sensitive sensor for your basic uh, status of your brain. So cerebral excitement is a very basic of your brain status. And also or such kind of an internal information of you uh, be accessible in real world uh, through the uh, non-invasive, uh, easy uh, method to monitor cerebral cycle. For example, like uh, available watch. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, um, and also a lot of uh, diseases like a psychiatric disorder, like uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, or depression uh, associated with sleep disorders, and also Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer, ALS, uh, neurodegenerative dis disorders are also related to sleep wake cycle disorders. And also neurodevelopmental disorder like ASD or ADHD, uh, or maybe epilepsy, uh, also associated with sleep disorders. So I don't say sleep is a causative, uh, 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 how to say, have a causative relationship with this disorder, but uh, I, I, uh, at least I'd like to say uh, there are strong relationship between these uh, CNS-related disease and sleep disorder. So by analyzing uh, sleep, so you may have a clue for the new treatment or new diagnostic tools. Uh, so that is why I'm very much interested in sleep. Uh, so in sleep research, there are a couple of, uh, at least two fundamental questions. So first one is why do we sleep? So what is sleep? Or oh, in other words, what is sleep functions? And the second question is, uh, what is the sleep mechanism? How is sleep regulated? This is a mechanistic uh, question. So I like sleep function questions, but uh, uh, it's a very tough question. So I will touch upon the first question in the end of my talk, but uh, 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 not, uh, for now on, uh, uh, let me focus on the uh, second question. How is sleep regulated? So uh, within, uh, within sleep research, uh, there are a couple of questions, but uh, one of them, the most important uh, question is sleep homeostasis questions, uh, which is simple, actually. So uh, it's basically saying, if you uh, have sleepless night, next day you feel sleepy. That, that's it. But uh, nobody knows how our brain or neuron counted up your ac neural activity and then convert it to sleep. Nobody knows yet. So what is the molecule? What is the cells? Uh, and how, what, what is the mechanism to integrate uh, such kind of information and then convert it to sleep? Nobody knows yet. So what is interesting here is a uh, time scale difference. So neural activity is usually millisecond to second, but uh, sleepiness may last hours, even days. And then there must be uh, integrator uh, to count up your neural activity and then convert them into the uh, uh, sleepiness to suppress your neural activity. Okay. And then, uh, so our hypothesis, so because my talk is a little bit uh, complicated, so let me show you some summary slide first. And then I will tell you why I think that it, uh, that's the case. Okay. So we recently, a couple of years ago, we found calcium concentration or calcium entry into your brain or neurons might be very, very important for your sleepiness. Okay. That's a basic message uh, or basic conclusion I have right now. So darling the way, uh, your neuron or your brain will be excited, okay? And then every time your neuron uh, gets excited, calcium go into your brain, okay? So calcium is a positive ion. So therefore, if calcium go into a cell, usually entry of the calcium may uh, make uh, uh, your brain excited. So calcium is not usually not related to suppression, but it's related to the excitation of the brain. But what we found is complete opposite. So for a long time, so calcium uh, will be counted by 
inside and then convert it to the sleepiness. That is what we found a couple of years ago. And then we also confirmed it. So let me explain why we think that the case. Okay. All right. So it's beginning with the very old, uh, how to say, finding or pioneering work. Okay. So uh, Professor Seria tried to look at the brain active, neuron activity of sleeping cat or waking cat. Okay. So he did the uh, uh, electro uh, physiology, like a touch clamp experiment, like you usually do. Uh, 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 so during the way, neuron uh, exhibit tonic firing, something like this. And then during the slow wave sleep and deep sleep, uh, neurons have very interesting, very beautiful uh, periodic oscillations. So, okay, so it has a kind of a bursting firing here and then resting uh, here and then bursting, resting, bursting, resting oscillations. It's like a double oscillation because you can see the oscillation here, but also you can see the kind of a slower oscillation. Uh, up state, down state, up state, down state, or down, uh, bursting, resting, bursting, resting type of situation. And then uh, frequency of slower oscillation is about 0.5 to 4 hertz. Uh, and then interestingly, this frequency also uh, uh, evident in brain, brain wide matters uh, because Alexander Wolberry. Uh, nicely indicate not only circadian oscillation, uh, circadian timing, but also uh, uh, your experience uh, will matter for your sleepiness. For example, if you cannot, uh, if you wake, uh, power of this frequency of your brain, entire brain activity will be enhanced, and then further enhanced if you cannot sleep. And then go back to normal if you have sufficient amount of sleep. So somehow uh, this frequency power, uh, which is called slow wave activity, are uh, evident not only in macroscopic level, but also in microscopic level. And then this accumulation is usually hours or even days, uh, but uh, uh, for, the phenomena of itself, uh, of slow wave oscillation is millisecond to second levels. So somehow, microscopic, macroscopic, there are relationship uh, in space, micro macroscopic level and microscopic level, and also in time, uh, it's uh, have a, um, a long and short uh, time relationship. So that is why it's, uh, this relation seems to be very, very intriguing. So many computational scientists try to model this phenomena uh, around 2000 to 2010. And then they build a uh, neural model with equipped with 1000 neuron or 10,000 neuron, and then try to, uh, how to say, constitute this phenomena. And it's, it was successful. But uh, at that time, computation power is also limited. And also, complexity of the model are quite large, uh, which uh, inhibit the, uh, uh, limit the prediction power. So therefore, we try to apply the uh, uh, mean field approximation, which is usually used in physics, and then try to reduce the model complexity down to one cell models. So in our model, we suppose that um, average neurons, uh, which might interact with average neurons, uh, and then that neuron also might interact with average neurons. And then each average neuron, we try to express a uh, different type of channel or pump, and then try to reconstitute the uh, uh, slow wave oscillations. We start with that 20 million uh, different models and then selected 1,000 uh, successful slow wave sleep models or something like this. And then what we found is quite intriguing. Four channel or pump seems to be very, very important to generate this kind of oscillations. So uh, uh, 
And this, these are four channel pump. Okay. So basically, during the tonic firing or bursting, calcium go into the cells through the voltage gated uh, calcium channel or NMDA receptor. And the accumulated calcium uh, stimulate calcium dependent potassium channels. So that is why bursting uh, will stop here uh, because of the accumulated calcium. Okay. And then accumulated calcium eventually go out uh, from uh, uh, to the uh, uh, outside of cells through the calcium pump. So therefore, calcium suppression will no longer work in here. So therefore, you can observe the uh, uh, bursting firing again. So that's a basic mechanism. So if this is true, you can predict two things. So for example, if you impair the entry pathway or execution pathway with calcium, you will expect more weight because uh, calcium break is a little bit difficult to, uh, to work, okay? But on the other hand, if you impair the calcium exit pathway, you will expect more sleep because calcium is easy to accumulate, okay? So that's a simple one. So, but, uh, uh, and then there are only four channel pumps. So it seems to be easy at the beginning, but it's turned out to be very difficult because uh, four gene family correspond to 29 gene members in uh, human or mice genome. So therefore to test this hypothesis, we need to, uh, how to say, manipulate or knock out every single genes which is kind of a very difficult at that time. So therefore, we try to develop a new method to make knockout mice, well, even knocking mice. Okay. So uh, by using condi uh, traditional strategy to make knockout mice, it takes uh, one to two years uh, because uh, we need to breed the mice a couple of times to, to make sufficient amount of mice or sufficient quality of mice, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, uh, it's quite a slow process. Uh, but uh, uh, we try to cut down this process down to three months or four months by bypassing the uh, crossing. So uh, because uh, so mice generation time is usually three months. So one month to be born uh, and then two months to be raised. Uh, so therefore in total, uh, three months is kind of a minimum, minimum requirement. And then in traditional uh, <coughs> method, we usually cross the mice a couple of times. So therefore we end up with the one to two years. But if you can skip the, uh, this crossing, uh, we can make knockout mice or knock-in mice within three months or within four months. So we conceptualize around this concept called next generation genetics around 2010. And then it took six to seven years, but uh, we <coughs> developed a new technique to make a knockout mice or knock-in mice. And then, base, and then after we made uh, the uh, different type of knockout mice, Next challenge will be phenotyping of sleep wake cycle. So usually in mice, we need to perform the brain surgery to put the electrode onto the uh, brain skull, I mean, uh, head skull. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, it's labor intensive, and also sometimes it's, uh, it requires a lot of training. So therefore, uh, we try to develop a new method to monitor uh, sleep wake cycle by using just respirations. So uh, we uh, create a chamber uh, by ourselves. And then within the chamber, uh, mice inhale the air or exhale the air. Uh, so, uh, and then by doing so, environmental atmosphere will be uh, slightly pushed or relaxed. And then subtle change of the pressure uh, can be detected by using the piezo sensor. So first, uh, we put the electro, uh, sorry, uh, piezo sensor on the airway. So in that case, uh, we, uh, how to say, we uh, had a uh, trouble or in noise, uh, trouble or with noise. 
So there are a lot of noise uh, in the atmosphere. But uh, when we put the uh, piezo sensor into something between that uh, the, uh, kind of a respiration chamber and the closed chamber, we put the uh, piezo sensor something between, uh, we reduce the noise, and then we increase the signal and noise ratio. And then finally, we can get the clear signal from during the wake and then during the sleep. And then we can distinguish sleep wake in very accurate manner, more than, uh, how to say, 94% uh, for sensitivity and not more than 97% for specificity. And then we uh, made a chamber by ourselves and then we made a rack by ourselves. And then we uh, we are uh, lucky enough to have a support from the uh, governmental institute. And then we built a, a facility, a dedicated for sleep wake cycle measurement. Uh, and then nowadays uh, we can monitor more than 1,000 152 miles per week. So this is a kind of a largest, uh, uh, how to say, well, largest uh, uh, sleep monitoring system. Okay. And then by using this kind of technique, we accidentally find out the uh, essential gene for REM sleep. Uh, this is a kind of a uh, very accidental finding. So, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, so there are a lot of uh, acetylcholine receptors. So we knocked out every single acetylcholine receptor in mice. So there are 16 acetylcholine receptors, a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and then uh, 10 of them are not lethal. So therefore we tested 10 nicotinic uh, uh, receptor knockout mice, one by one. And then we had a... a uh, no phenotype at all. And then the, there are remaining uh, five uh, muscarinic receptors. So therefore we knocked out uh, one by one. And then we had a, pheno a sleep phenotype in muscarinic receptor one and three. And then, then we combine uh, these two knockout uh, simultaneously. We made a, a double knockout mice by using uh, this method. And then we found a huge phenotype, a sleep, yes, a shorter sleep phenotype. And eventually we did the uh, uh, brain surgery and then tried to look at the, uh, uh, to try to distinguish non REM sleep and REM sleep. And then we were shocked because REM sleep are totally abolished in double knockout. So oh, by using this kind of method, I mean, uh, next generation genetics together with uh, phenotyping, uh, non invasive uh, sleep phenotyping, we can identify that this kind of uh, organ genes. Okay. And then, so oh, we did the, uh, 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 we made uh, uh, almost all knockout mice for calcium uh, channels, NMD receptors, and then calcium pond and the calcium dependent potassium channels. And then we found. Uh, if you knocked out calcium channels or calcium dependent potassium channels or NMDA receptor, we found sleep, shorter sleep phenotype. And then when we knocked out calcium pump, we also found uh, 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 longer sleep phenotype, which is consistent with our hypothesis. So, which means calcium seems to work as sleep promoter, which is kind of a, a opposite to the uh, usual. Uh, how to say, prediction uh, as a uh, calcium as a kind of a positive bio, okay. And then also we, when we knocked out um, downstream kinase, we found come kinase two and act as a sleep promoting kinase. Because calcium is act as a kind of very fast, uh, they, they go back and forth uh, and then it's quite fast which does not explain about the sleepiness. So therefore we focus on the downstream pathway of uh, uh, calcium. And then we try to identify the uh, downstream pathway. And then we found calcium to act as a sleep promoting kinase. So based on these results, we propose calcium and also calcium dependent enzyme uh, may act uh, such as phosphoric uh, kinase act as, as uh, a sleep promoting pathway. So we identify this 
uh, uh, pathway in 2016 in April, uh, uh, spring. Uh, uh, so uh, other Japanese uh, researcher uh, also identified a different kinds in autumn, uh, which is called SI history. Okay. And then uh, Meritafti in Swiss uh, Lausanne uh, also identified uh, ARC 1 and 2, uh, which is another kinase, act as a, uh, acting as a uh, sleep promoter kinase in early uh, 2017. So uh, 2016 to 2017 is a kind of a beginning of the understanding the molecular pathway of mammary muscle. So, and then 2017, uh, Graham Dillon um, described the phosphoproteomics of uh, uh, darling sleep and darling wake, and also Chin Fa Liu and Stephen Brown and Charles Lobo also uh, described the uh, phosphorylation might be associated with your sleep or your wake. So it's kind of a beginning of the new era of the uh, uh, understanding the molecular pathway of uh, sleep-wake cycle. So in our case, our calcium-dependent enzyme uh, seems to have a key role. Okay? Uh, and then some kinase too, um, kind of a famous kinase in neuroscience, because it's already uh, known to be involved in uh, learning and memory. So in learning and memory, these kinases are activated by calcium and also or calcium calimo, uh, protein called calimogenin. Okay? And then act this activation uh, will be uh, memorized as autophosphorylation. Autophosphorylation means this enzyme also acts as a substrate target of enzyme. Okay? And then, so once you are get excited, such kind of excitation will be memorized for a long time, a couple of times, okay? And then uh, this uh, activation uh, can be converted to the higher enzyme activity. Okay. This is already known in the context of the learning and memory, but nobody knows uh, uh, in the context of sleep. Okay. So that is why we investigate. Actually, uh, two researchers in our lab try to investigate this uh, molecular detail. Uh, okay. And then, but the, uh, it, it was tough a little bit because this enzyme have a uh, different uh, uh, possible phosphorylation site. Uh, so I said, come kinase alpha, beta two genes, two proteins. And then we counted up the possible phosphorylation site. We found 69 phosphorylation possible site, enzyme modification site in beta and 54 uh, possible site in alpha. So to be comprehensive, we try to test one by one. I mean, we test the 69 possible hypotheses by using the virus. So uh, we made a virus in which uh, we, how to say, try to express, uh, produce uh, different type of kinase. So in each construct, uh, we mutated, we try to mimic the autophosphorylation status in different sites. So there are 69 different sites, and then we try to mimic the autophosphorylation by changing the amino acid. <laughs> and then we test it one by one, uh, and then by making a virus. Okay? So these data are in vivo, in vivo data. And then we found particular site uh, mutation uh, uh, a strongly induced sleep. So we made a very sleepy mice. <laughs> and then this site is a kind of famous site, uh, which is known to be old autophosphorylation site. Okay. And then, and then, uh, so when we express just wild type, no mutation uh, protein, it's same. Uh, with or without protein expression, it doesn't change. So, which means not the amount, but the quality might matter. Okay. So, but uh, when we uh, express mutant kinase, we increase the uh, uh, sleep 
uh, more than a couple of hours. And then when we express non postulation type uh, kinase, observed uh, sleep effects are abolished, meaning postulation still does matter. And then next question is uh, kinase activity matter or not? Okay. And then so to test this hypothesis, you we introduce kinase death mutation into the uh, phosphorylation uh, mimicking mutant, and then observe the effect are uh, reduced and abolished. So which means uh, enzyme activity matters. So phosphorylation status as well as the kinase activity matters to induce. Sleepiness. And then we also tested when you feel sleepy, that site are also already phosphorylated. So we tested this hypothesis by uh, exposing the mice to the sleep deprived condition. In other words, you have to say uh, you use uh, uh, some brush and then try to mice to be awake for six hours, which is uh, kind of a Kind of a nightmare for mice, but a nightmare for humans. So it's very difficult to, to make them awake. Yes. But uh, uh, so in that conditions, uh, you observe the uh, increase of the these modifications, uh, which means uh, sleepiness and postulation are correlated. Okay, so this is a little bit complicated. Uh, so we then try to ask, you know, or oh, oh, found status uh, information, sleepiness information or not. Okay. So if discovered status are, are correspond to sleepiness information, it should be manipulated. Okay. To test this hypothesis, uh, we try to find out the additional phosphorylation site. So in other words, uh, so we expected uh, sleep status is quite dangerous status. So therefore, uh, sometimes it should be canceled in very dangerous situations. So like an emergency. So, uh, so, so we expected there must be sleep canceling phosphorylations or um, what we discovered site is involved in sleep inductions, but a sleep has a lot of step, like a sleep, not only sleep induction, but also sleep maintenance. So we expected maybe other uh, uh, phosphorylation site might be involved in the secondary step, such as sleep maintenance. So therefore, uh, start with the uh, fast phosphorylation site mimicking, and then we test it. Uh, try to identify the second phosphorylation site. So there are six, uh, out of 69 phosphorylation sites, there are 68 phosphorylation sites. So we try to identify the second phosphorylation, which might affect on the sleep status. And then we identified some phosphorylation site involved in the sleep maintenance, okay? So it's changed from sleep induction mode to sleep maintenance mode. And also other frustration sites might be involved in the sleep cancer. So therefore, well, we found uh, not only sleep induction, but also sleep maintenance, and also we found uh, sleep cancer. So, uh, and then it seems like a cycle. We still don't know the uh, evidence to, to show the real cycle, but uh, at least there are multiple states, which is represented within the uh, phosphorylation uh, of the, uh, this particular kinase, okay? So like first site and second site and also cancer site, okay? Uh, okay. And also uh, if these status, uh, I mean phosphorylation status of this particular enzyme are related to the core mechanism of sleep, you can manipulate uh, sleep quality and also sleep quantity in very significant manner. So therefore, we try to change the sleep quantity 
at least twofold, or three to quality, at least twofold, by activating this kinase or inhibiting this kinase. And then we found usually half of the day mice have a sleep, and then we try to push toward 1,000 per day, okay? Or try to shrink uh, this uh, down to 500 minutes per day. Uh, so, uh, roughly speaking, so we can change from 500 to uh, 1,000. So, at least, uh, about twofold. Yeah, at least in sleep quality, quantity. And also, when we suppress this enzyme activity, we can uh, how to say, uh, uh, decrease the quality of sleep, which is measured by delta papa, uh, slow wave oscillation, slow wave sleep uh, uh, activity. Okay. And then, uh, which is not uh, is, uh, shown here, but that when we express uh, uh, kinase, active mode of kinase, we can increase delta papa. So we observe the twofold change, not only in quantity, but also quality. So, so uh, based on these results, we found, we proposed calcium and calcium dependent uh, enzyme pathway seems to be key uh, for mammalian sleep, maybe human sleep. So uh, when we published this paper, 2017, <laughs> uh, interesting Indian uh, newspaper had, had a headline. So nighttime milk, will be beneficial for your sleep. We didn't talk about the nighttime milk uh, in, in the paper, but uh, might be, you still don't know. Oh, a human has a wisdom uh, and good quality, a uh, good ability to abstract information for a long time, uh, human experiment. So maybe we have wisdom, uh, such kind of wisdom. Okay, so calcium matters. And then, uh, so currently, uh, so we tried to, uh, so that was an uh, in vivo, I mean, mouse study, but uh, uh, I would say a little bit hard to tackle down the detailed pathway of molecules. So therefore, we recently tried to make mice, uh, I mean, tried to uh, make neuron have wake or sleep in vitro, in vitro. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, neuron, uh, I mean, cultural neuron may have wake, something like this. So each neuron be synchronized with each other uh, or have sleep like state, something like this. Okay? That is discovered by uh, almost 10 years ago by Mary Tafti or Jim Kruger independently. At that time, I was a little bit skeptical about this finding, but uh, our in vivo data uh, clearly show that uh, excitatory neuron, or maybe probably in cortex, might be very, very important for, for the phenotype we observed. So therefore, we are uh, looking at the uh, old literature and then try to or create or reproduce their, their finding. Uh, for example, when we uh, introduce the, some neuromodulator such as dopamine or norepinephrine uh, or acetylcholine or histamine together, uh, so we can create a uh, wave like state. And then they said, if you keep the neuron uh, for a long time, it's become sleep like state. Okay. At that time, they use a full chemical dopamine, norepinephrine, uh, acetylcholine, and histamine. But it's, it was a little bit complex. So, therefore, we tried to narrow down, and then we found either dopamine or norepinephrine or noradrenaline or together may induce wake like state. And also, if you add NMDA, uh, you can induce sleep like state. So here's an example of the in vivo, in vitro experiment. So, oh, so Fumia, uh, who is a, at that time grad student, now a uh, postdoc, uh, set a uh, uh, plate. Uh, each plate 
uh, uh, has a uh, six well, and then each well have one thousand electrode, and then you can monitor the one thousand um, electrode activity. And then if you add uh, dopamine uh, and noradrenaline together, uh, so you can induce very beautiful desynchronization patterns of the 1000 electrode. And then if you add uh, NMDA and titrated, uh, say four micromolar uh, or up to 10 micromolar, you can see the uh, quite good slow wave oscillation. Four micromolar is a little bit weak, but if you increase five micromolar or 10 micromolar, so you can see the nice slow wave oscillation, slow wave bike oscillations, which is consistent with the, our calcium and also calcium dependent enzyme hypothesis. Uh, and then to directly test the, a load of the calcium, we depleted calcium uh, by washing out or by adding the calcium curate or reagent like uh, EGTA. Uh, so we can induce wake life state, complete desynchronizations. And then when we add back calcium, you can see the nice slow wave oscillations. So calcium concentration matters. And then also I didn't include on uh, my slide about the calcium load of the kinase too. But uh, uh, come kinase to inhibition suppress the slow wave oscillation, and then come kinase activation suppress wake indu induction of the wave life state. So therefore, our, our activity of the calcium dependent enzyme also very very important, uh, at least in 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 vitro or this in vitro mechanism. So, oh, and also, oh, recently we found. Uh, sleep status is not very inactive status because when we depleted calcium, com almost completely depleted calcium, neurons stop firing. And then we, when we add back calcium a little bit, you can induce wake like state. And then we add back calcium further, we found sleep life state. Okay. So that was a uh, little bit opposite of what we expected. So because if the sleep life state is very inactive, like a silent, very near to silent, you can expect silent wake a sleep like state and then wake like wake like state, right? But what we found is in disorder, silent status and then wake like status and then sleep like state. So it seems like a sleep like status seems to be relatively active compared to the quiet wake, <laughs> at least in vitro. And also interestingly, firing frequency of wake like status, and then we compare the uh, average firing frequency, um, uh, average firing frequency of sleep like status is lower. That is uh, how to say uh, trivial, right? But uh, when you look at the fasting firing frequency closely, firing frequency of the fasting status is relatively higher than uh, com uh, than those of the firing frequency of the wake like status. So locally, uh, sleep like status is quite active, but uh, such kind of local active status may induce this balance. So it seems like that. So we still don't know the exact mechanism, but uh, at least in vitro or data, uh, sleep-like status is relatively active. So that, we, that is a bit round recently. Okay. And then, so uh, as I said, sleep are uh, related to uh, central nervous system disorder. And then I like to apply what we found to schizophrenia, for example. So in schizophrenia, uh, uh, they have, uh, the patient had various type of symptom, including positive symptom and negative symptom. Okay. 
And the impulsive symptom patient uh, have uh, illusions or, or hallucinations, uh, sometimes hearing, uh, okay? Uh, and then uh, NMDA receptor dysfunction, at least in part, uh, uh, involved in the uh, schizophrenia-like phenotype. Because if you pharmacologically inhibit uh, NMDA receptor by drug, you can induce positive symptom and negative symptom. And also some patient raise the antibody against NMDA receptor, and then suddenly they uh, exhibited positive symptom and negative symptom. And then one of the story are well written in the uh, famous non-fictions called Brain on Fire. And the movie is also made based on her story. So it's quite intriguing uh, film. Uh, so uh, I strongly recommend to watch it. But uh, immunologically or pharmacologically, dysfunction of the NMDA receptor may lead to uh, schizophrenia like uh, phenotype. Okay. But uh, if the calcium may act as an enhancer or uh, activator of your neurons, uh, you cannot explain why uh, this function of the calcium channel may lead to the uh, positive symptom, for example. So positive symptom may suggest very active status over uh, separate over activation of your brain. But uh, if calcium may act as a suppressor of your brain to induce sleep, uh, we can explain about the uh, dysfunction of the calcium channel may lead to the uh, how to say, uh, prolonged wake or uh, prolonged, uh, how to say, excitations. Uh, to directly test this hypothesis, uh, we try to look at the uh, brain activity of, uh, of, uh, of the mice, okay. uh, which is induced by, uh, how to say, NMDA receptor inhibitor. So our hypothesis is simple. Positive symptom may be uh, related to excitation of the excited cells, and then negative symptom may be related to uh, excitation of the inhibitory neurons. And then for that purpose, uh, we try to develop a new uh, technology called tissue clearing and a whole brain monitoring of uh, profiling of the cells. So uh, we conceptualize this um, technology around 2010, and then we first published a two paper in 2014 in uh, cells. And then, so first paper, we uh, show the, uh, sorry, so we show the um, clearing of the entire adult mice brain on or uh, entire, um, I would say, adult mouse primate brain, and then try to look at the brain. Okay. And then in second paper, we try to uh, make entire mice body transparent. Okay. At that time, how uh, to say, performance of tissue clearing is limited, but uh, over the uh, almost decade, we increase the performance. And then here is a uh, kind of a current status of the, uh, this performance. So now we can look at the every single cell existing in the adult mice brain. It is about 100 uh, million cells, which is, uh, how to say, a uh, little bit less than uh, Japanese population, uh, which is more than German or French or maybe uh, even UK populations. So you can literally look at the every single cell existing in the mice brain. And also in newborn mice body, uh, so we also look at the, uh, every single cell exists in the entire mice body because uh, we can clear the pigment and also we can clear the bone, uh, which is a little bit difficult in 2014, but nowadays we can clear the bone and um, uh, pigment of the eye. And then uh, newborn mice contain 428 million cells. So we can literally look at the, every single cell existing in the newborn mice. And then you can also apply uh, this technique to visualize uh, a particular type of uh, cells, for example, neurons. 
or microglia, okay? uh, which is quite important for your brain function. And then half of the uh, 100 million cells are neurons. And then 3% of the entire brain cell are uh, microglia. And then in disease condition, like the Alzheimer's disease model, you can monitor the interaction between these two type of cells. For example, neurons are literally eaten by microglia in a very early stage of the Alzheimer model mass. So you can see the, such kind of interaction. And then you can quantify the, such kind of event, which is a rare event, but a, 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 a existing event in uh, disease model mice. And then, uh, okay, so, and also this kind of a technique can be applicable to human tissues. Okay. So if you are uh, interested in being the first ever transparent human, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> I cannot guarantee you are still alive after the treatment, but uh, uh, you will be recorded as the first human. Okay, anyway. So, uh, and then we apply this technique to the visualization of the brain activity. So with, with or without any media receptor inhibitors. So as you can see here, uh, you can see the greenish color, which indicates the uh, prolonged brain activity, uh, which is uh, quantified by the expression amount of the protein of the immediate origin, okay, called ARC. Okay. And such genes are expressed when uh, neurons are activated for a long time. So that is why it's an indicator of the brain activity. Okay. So it's uh, quite odd because mice is already dead, okay? But uh, you, can, you can look at the kind of a, uh, kind of a uh, remaining uh, uh, after mice are already sacrificed. And then, so you cannot ask mice what you can hear or what you can see, but uh, if you look at the brain activity, uh, visual cortex, auditory cortex are highly activated, uh, which might indicate mice have a, a lot of, how uh, to say, activity in visual or auditory sensory system. Okay, okay. so oh, calcium used to be uh, believed to be excitation uh, in uh, kind of a uh, accelerator of the excitability. Uh, but uh, what we found is uh, calcium and also downstream pathway of the calcium, calcium dependent enzyme, act as a suppressor of the brain activity and then induce sleepiness. Okay. And then that is uh, uh, based on the animal study. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm I'm how to say, uh, training as a, a medical doctor, I'm interested in the application to human patient. So therefore, we start the collaboration with uh, one of the uh, biggest center in schizophrenia or bipolar or depressions in Japan. Okay. Uh, so Dr. Ueno and Dr. Matsuzaki, uh, main uh, collaborator. So for that purpose, uh, we try to develop the uh, kind of a new method. How many more minutes? Oh, so maybe five minutes. Is it? Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I tried to show them. Yes, it's already okay. So maybe, yeah. yeah. So oh, we recently, how to say, developed a new method to increase the uh, accuracy to detect intermittent wake. Uh, so usually 50% is uh, the kind of the best uh, performance, but we try to increase uh, 50 to 80%. And then we apply this technique to, uh, how to say, uh, one, uh, 100,000 uh, uh, individual in UK Biobank, and then try to look at the uh, sleep-wake cycle, okay? And then, uh, based on that, uh, we try to propose the uh, sleep checkup uh, 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 project in Japan, because in Japan, so we are uh, uh, kind of notorious for the sleep, short sleep uh, 
And then Japanese government gets excited about this idea. Uh, and also Japanese sleep society gets excited about this idea. So we propose uh, to introduce sleep measurement into the uh, uh, annual mandatory annual checkup, health checkup in Japan. Okay. And then, okay. So oh, last year uh, in November, uh, 22 congressmen, parliamental member get together, made a, a sweep uh, caucus. And then it's become kind of a trend in Japan. So nowadays 33 uh, congressmen are the member of uh, sweep caucus. Okay. They are actively uh, uh, discussing about the introduction of the sweep measurement into the uh, annual sleep checkup. And then we are uh, applying this technique to not only sleep um, healthy, I mean healthy individual, but also to uh, schizophrenia. Okay. Yeah. And then we are uh, trying to apply this technique to diva study of the sleep. And also we try to nowadays to try to define the sleep page based on the accurate measurement of sleep. So maybe I will stop here. Yeah. And then thank, thank you for your attention. Yeah. Amazing uh, talk and amazing visuals, but I'm not going to volunteer it. Question? So, Kai, it's quite you, you see, you finished talking about this human. Uh, work and working on UK Biobank. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, is there is there mapping across of you know, the homologous genes? Um, do, do, do you have sort, sort, sorts of sets that you would select based on the mouse work, or how how, how do you plan to map across? Yes. Uh, so currently, we are doing the GIVA study by based on the kind of improved uh, phenotyping, and then yeah. So and the, we now have a. The, a uh, small candidate, we try to increase the candidate, but the, after we identify the uh, related gene in human, maybe we go to mice to yeah. make a knockout uh, and then test the uh, 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 contribution of that gene in at least in mice. Yeah. 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 But uh, uh, so for now we can, how to say, um, test the phenotype of human cells in vitro. So therefore, uh, in vitro yeah. cell show the sleep-like state, wake-like state. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, in the future, uh, so we like to test the phenotype by using the human cells. Yes. Questions? Okay. So uh, yeah, thanks again. That, thank that you. was fascinating. Yes, yeah, thank uh, you so much. Possibly outside some of our <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really limits of our expertise, but no, it's good. It's really good to hear stuff. Uh, uh, the um, the um, you know, sort of science such work that can be linked across the you know, using genotype to mm -hmm. try and try and get. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat>